How to manage your emails and correspondence in Scrivener. Have you ever typed out a long, well-thought-out communication online only to have the whole thing disappear before you press send and you have to start all over again? Do you frequently get asked the same question and find yourself searching through your emails to find your perfectly composed answer with all the relevant links before you can reply? Are you sending a similar message to many people, like resumes or book queries to agents, but each one has to be personalized? I found the best way to manage all my correspondence is to have a Scrivener project with files for different types of email copy and lists of requirements or directions in handy folders right beside my editor for easy reference. And Scrivener has the added advantage of being able to view the document you're following and the one you're writing in in your editor at the same time. Hi, this is Kaz from Scrivener Quick Start, where I help you organize your projects and get more done faster using Scrivener. And in this training, I'm going to show you how you can use my Scrivener correspondence template or copy me to create a template of your own. You'll find a link to my Scrivener templates page in the description below so that you can download the template we're working on today and you'll find instructions on the same page to upload it to your Scrivener app and add your own spin to it. In Scrivener, first you have to decide if you want a dedicated correspondence project or if you want to add a correspondence folder to each of your book or screenplay projects. This is important because project templates come preloaded with all the most suitable compile and formatting settings for the type of document you plan to export. So if you're writing books, you need to start off with a novel template or non-fiction template. If you're writing a screenplay, you need to start off in a screenplay template. If you're using the template as a standalone correspondence template, you don't need the export settings for a book or a screenplay. If you open Scrivener from scratch, you'll see the Project Templates window. But if you have an existing project open, go to File, New Project. You'll find the Correspondence Template in the Quick Start tab or the Miscellaneous tab. Open it as a new project. And if you want to add the contents of the template to an existing project, if you have Merge All Windows toggled on, drag the project template off and place it above the project you want to add to. Create a correspondence folder inside the existing project and drag across any folders you want to add to your existing project. Then, as you can't have two document template folders active at the same time, if your current project came with its own templates folder, you have to drag only the sub-documents across and place them inside the current templates folder. Then, delete the correspondence template project, but in this case I'm going to use it as a dedicated correspondence project. Let's start with swipe files. Every time I have to write a new type of email that requires a bit of research to do it in the politest, most effective way, I add it to this swipe file. Here are a couple of examples to get you started. As with all my templates, examples are in green and all you have to do is replace the copy with your own. If you're writing books and you want to publish them traditionally, you'll need to email several agents. Before you do that, spend some time composing the various different pieces of content they might request along with your query letter. If you're not writing books, bear with me because this method of organizing correspondence inside of Scrivener has several uses. Now, you need to make a list of all the agents you approach with all of their details so that you remember why you approach these specific agents and you can make their email personal. So I've created a template for you in the templates folder with an agent profile where you can add all their details and preferences and a document to write all your correspondence with them. As you need to duplicate this folder for every agent, select the document directly above where you want to create an agent profile and go to Project, 
New from Template and select the generic agent folder. Rename the folder with the agent or agency name and drag it up into your Agents Approached folder. Now follow the examples written in green. Only after you have a thorough understanding of who you're writing to and what they require, split your screen, place your cursor inside the second split and select the correspondence file. Replace the green text with your own based on the information you have about your agent and whatever they requested using materials from your Materials to Send folder. Note, for online security, agents do not like to open email attachments, so your materials need to be a continuation of the letter in the email. Now I'm going to pause the video and add several examples of agents to give us something to work with as I show you the next cool Scrivener function that's invaluable when doing submissions or anything similar. I like to be able to see the status of my document preparation and query process at a glance. I know I could use status stamps, but I prefer labels because I can have them display in the binder. Here's how that works. Open your inspector window. You have to have a document selected in the binder to see the labels menu. Go to the labels drop down menu at the bottom of the screen. If you're using previous versions of Scrivener, this will be in the middle here. Either way, open the label drop down menu and choose edit. In this template, I've already edited the labels to suit a document compilation process and a query process in two different color tones to differentiate between them. You can add colors by clicking inside the color dot. You can change these labels to track any process you want. Simply click on the titles and change them. Add more by hitting the plus button. Delete them by hitting the minus button. Now that you've set them for the project, you need to tell Scrivener where you want to see them. Go to View, Use Label Color In and place checks beside the places where you want to see your labels. I already added labels to these documents to demonstrate and I'll show you how to apply them in a moment. First, let's add them to the outliner rows as well. That's View, Use Label Colors in, Outliner Rows. Now, as soon as the status of your document changes, right-click on the file in your binder and assign a label to it. A great place to sort and manage the query process or a similar task is in Outliner View. Select your Agents Approached folder. Now you'll see a list of all your queries with their labels indicating where they are in the query process. All this color is too distracting for me, so I'll toggle off Use Label Colors in Outliner Rows. Note that label colors will still show up as dots in the outliner by default. Now you can open the label menu via the up-down arrows and change a document's status. I've also included a column for modified date. Of course these are all modified today because this is a demo, but this is really useful to see if you haven't heard from an agent for so long it becomes obvious they have no intention of replying. You can add or remove columns via the Columns drop-down menu. As with query letters, I've created a template for guest blogging correspondence. Let's look at this in Scrivening's view mode and have a look inside the templates folder. If you have an existing dedicated Scrivener blog project, decide whether you want to drag this document template directly into it or if you want to keep it here inside your communications project. In this demo, I'm blogging for other people, so to open a new blog template, I'll select Websites Approached, which is where I want the new template folder to appear, and go to Project, New from Template, and choose Guest Blog Posts. 
name it for the website you approached or approached you and drag it up into the website's approached folder. Here again, you need to do some research into the website or blogs you want to post to and fill in their details and requirements. If you're reaching out to them, I've given you a couple of examples of what to say. If they've contacted you, you don't need this, so delete it. Paste their email in here, split your screen, place your cursor in the second split, create a new document in the binder, and answer their email. I like to nest the reply inside the original query so that they stay together. Open the blog post document in the bottom split and write it up using the guidelines and information you gathered about the website in the top split. And I've added a file for follow-up in case you want to record comments on your blog and your replies. Remember, you can adjust anything about this template to suit yourself. Whatever your business or expertise, you'll find that you answer the same questions frequently and you don't want to have to think of how to explain something every time you're asked. So I have a swipe file for frequently asked questions. Here are mine. I have a question from Jack. I'll add his name to the question in the binder and paste his question into the top split. Then, select my generic answer to that question. Place my cursor in the bottom split and add his name to the answer document. Now I can write my answer to Jack based on the generic answer, but also use the backwards and forwards arrows to skip back to his actual question so that I can personalize my answer and forwards again to the generic answer. Then, nest Jack's answer inside his question in the binder. Most questions I'm asked are short and require a short answer, but sometimes they are very long and convoluted and take me the better part of a day to decipher what the student means and then work out how to implement it. I don't know how anyone does this outside of Scrivener. I would usually rename this file with their name and a reference. Then place my cursor inside the top split and paste in the question and answer it step by step in the second split. If the conversation goes back and forth, I just keep nesting the files. All things in this template are just examples and suggestions. Modify everything to suit the kind of correspondence you do and add more folders and files as you need them. You can even modify the document templates or add more. Just know that whatever is in this folder can be duplicated by going to Project, New from Template. And that's how to get the best out of this template. I hope arranging your documents in the binder and learning new Scrivener tricks for keeping track of your processes will make your correspondence easier from now on. Just about every content creator will have to write some copy sometime. For me, it's mostly sales copy. For you, it might be the description or advertising for your book, or you might even be a professional copywriter. Either way, what I'm about to show you in the next video about copywriting in Scrivener will make your life exponentially easier. Thanks for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next video.